Hello everyone. This is the video for the quantum mechanical model. Uh, this is the basis for electron configuration. It's the current model of the atom, um, or at least the one that is accepted most widespread. We have uh, quite a bit to talk about here, and it's really an interesting topic because there's no real way to break this to you in small pieces. And so as you go through this video, understand that in order to tackle this topic, I have to throw a ton of information at you. Once you have that information, uh, the application will be much easier. And so just kind of trust me with this. Every semester I get those looks, the blank stares and panicked expressions in the classroom. And by the time we finish the unit, they're like, can the whole exam be on this? This was so easy. And so just kind of keep in mind as we go through this, I understand it stinks while we're getting the information, but the application will make it worthwhile, okay? So for this video, we're really just gonna be focusing on the quantum mechanical model, and we're gonna look at some quantum numbers and then electron configurations. Now, this is actually one of my favorite topics, primarily because once you know the rules, it's really kind of, you just get it and you can see the pattern, you can see the trends, and there's actually not much work involved. So just kind of keep that in mind, okay? Um, there is a ton of information, there's a ton of ways I could ask questions, but you know, it'll be okay. So here's where we are going to be focusing for this video. We're going to start with the quantum mechanical theory, um, and then we are going to talk about the different aspects of that theory, including all of the principles. We're going to talk about the quantum numbers and we'll really get into identifying them, what do they mean, and uh, stuff like that. From there we'll get into orbitals and we'll start talking about electron configuration and orbital diagrams. So the quantum mechanical model came about because we needed a way of reconciling what we saw with the continuous spectrum and what we knew about the Bohr model. Remember the Bohr model only worked with hydrogen. It did not work with anything else because the Bohr model is focused primarily on uh, circular orbitals. And so before we can really get into this, let's look at what an orbital is. And you know, originally we just thought it was a circular path, kind of like a track around a high school high school football field. Um, it turns out it's much more than that. And so we're going to really get into what an orbital is, and then we're also going to really focus on the energy of those electrons inside each orbital. Now, I could tell you quite a bit about um, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, but for what you need to know, you only need to know that it is a theory that says it's impossible for us right now to know both the momentum and position of an electron. We can find out where it is, or we can look at how fast it's going. You cannot measure both simultaneously. It's just too much for us to be able to see at this moment. So don't get too bogged down with the um, equation. You don't really need that. It's just a definition of you cannot find both the location and speed of an electron. Now, when we talk about orbitals, we need to give it a defined area. And so if you look at an orbital, what we're really going to do is we don't have the track around the football field. Instead, it is an area. It's like talking about inside your house, where can you be locating? Um, where are you on the couch? Are you in the living room? Are you in the you know, kitchen? What, what are you doing? And so it's this, when we say, when you're in your reading and it's talking about wave functions, we're going to keep it simple. 
Okay, and for us, an orbital is just an area where you are 90% likely to find an electron. Now, there are circular orbitals, and they increase in size as they get more energy. But for the moment, just think of this as a general area where you are 90% likely to find an electron, okay? Now, the other thing I want to say is remember that electrons are negatively charged. The nucleus has protons that are positively charged. And so the idea here is electrons are attracted to the nucleus. They're going to be relatively close to the nucleus. And so when we talk about the probability, probability increases as you get closer to the nucleus. So orbitals are wave functions. We're just going to talk about them in orbitals as orbitals. We're not going to use wave functions too much. Um, if you go into later chemistry, you might. This is more of a physics type thing though, okay? So orbitals are just the area where you're going to be likely to find an electron. Specifically, they chose 90. Uh, you, you know, I don't know why. Another definition here, the Pauli exclusionary principle says that each electron has its own unique set of quantum numbers. Now, the way I kind of consider quantum numbers is it's like an address, okay? So you can consider, you know, on, you know, this is going to be embarrassing, but um, on Earth, you know, yeah, good enough. Um, you can talk about the fact that we're in North America, we're in the US, you're in Virginia, you're on your street, and you get more and more specific. The same thing happens with quantum numbers. Quantum numbers are an address of electrons. We're going to start with a really broad area and we're going to narrow it down to a specific electron. And it's really going to be specific because no two electrons can have the same set of quantum numbers. And that means um, using these four numbers, we can really start to look at reactivity. We can look at bonding, everything inside uh, the atom itself. So the quantum mechanical model decided, or whoever, uh, you know, it, it, it uses, let's do that, quantum numbers to give as much information as possible about the electron, where it is in the orbital, its energy, everything. And so there's four of these, okay? Now, the principal quantum number is identified as the lowercase n. This is the size and energy of an electron. It's a very broad quantum number, okay? It's like saying North America. It doesn't tell us very much. It only tells us size and energy. We're going to deal with each of these specifically in just a minute, guys, okay? So just kind of bear with me for a second. Now, if we look at uh, the angular moment, the angular momentum quantum number, this should be momentum in here, it is a lowercase cursive L. It is not an E, it is a cursive L. Don't write E in your MSQs, okay? It's, a, it's an L, it's a cursive L. If you can't do a cursive L, a lowercase L is also fine, um, but I prefer cursive if at all possible. Now this tells us the subshell or the shape of the orbital, okay? Now, it is kind of nice because what is going to happen is this is the way chemists show a sense of humor, okay? Now, you're going to get that in just a minute, and I'm going to tell you some embarrassing jokes to help you remember that, but that's the truth. The, magne the magnetic quantum number, M sub cursive L. So this is a cursive L down here, it's not an E. This is the orientation of the orbital. Within the subshell, which orbital are we talking about? Now, subshell and orbital are used interchangeably in your text, 
And I try to be very careful that I don't do that, that I talk about a subshell and orbital separately. But just know they can be used interchangeably as terms, okay? So the spin quantum number is m sub s. This is the direction of the spinning. Now kind of think about it in terms of uh, left or right, okay? Here we are just identifying which one. You know, if you were to share a room with somebody, do you get the left side or the right side? That is really all that it comes down to. And so as you are dealing with the spin quantum number, that m sub s, it's just left or right is what it comes down to. So the quantum numbers are kind of summarized in this table. And I want to um, go to the periodic table for a second. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this and show. We're going to discard. Now, remember, guys, I said that the principal quantum number is the size and energy level for an electron. Now, interestingly enough, where to go? 15, 15, there it is. If we look up here, All right, we're going to hit pause while I insert that slide. Nothing ever takes as long if you hit pause. So here, now when I'm talking about size and energy level, the n ranges from 1 to 7. Well, what's great about that is that as we are dealing with this, Okay, we're going to hit pause. Okay, so as we're dealing with this n quantum number, because it's size and energy level, we can kind of think about how the, the size gets bigger, the n gets bigger. Now, when we look at the periodic table, what's great is that this ranges 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, from 1 to 7. And for the most part, the good place to start with n is with the number of rows. Which row are you on? If you're talking about lithium or beryllium, carbon, nitrogen, uh, fluorine, your n is going to be 2. And so it's a really good way of kind of looking at a general area. Okay? So n ranges from 1 to 7. Generally, this is usually from the rows. The angular momentum quantum number has a little bit more to do with the size and shape. And so um, if we look at what this is really telling us, this ranges from 0 to n minus 1. So if our principal quantum number is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. It can only be 0. So the first energy level has one sublevel that we call 0. The second energy level has two sublevels. It starts at 0, and then 2 minus 1 is 1. So the two sublevels are either 0 or 1. Number 3 starts at 0 and goes up to n minus 1. Two minus, 3 minus 1 is 2. And so you have the third energy level with three sublevels. 0, 1, and 2. Now 4 is as high as I'm going to go because just time-wise you can't answer some of these questions um, in two minutes or less if you have uh, above 4 here. So the fourth energy level has four sublevels. Starts at 0, ranges up to n minus 1, so it goes from 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now Let's look at what that really means for a second. And show. Oh, for 
a sec. Sorry, I was looking for a brighter image. Now, whenever we talk about an L of zero, that is going to be a spherical orbital. So, you know, spherical starts with S. We could draw it as a zero. So if you had to represent this shape with a number, it could be zero. Now, on the other hand, if we have a P orbital, there are actually more than one P orbital. They look kind of like these dumbbells. And we represent P with the number one. D ends up looking like a, okay, so let me see if I can do this. The way that I remember P is one, there's two ways. Uh, it's not going to let me do it in this program. So this is a dumbbell, it's a dumbbell orbital. Let me write a little bit wider like that. Now you can kind of imagine if we pushed this in, the dumbbell would get a little bit thinner, a little bit thinner, until it just looks like the number one. So I remember that P, it, the dumbbell orbital, looks like a one, is a one, because when you smush it, it's flat like a one. Okay? Now, The way that I remember a clover is two, so these are all clovers, kind of like that. Um, they're on the x, y axis, between the x and z axis, between the y and z axis, uh, between uh, whichever two I didn't say, and then there's this one that's kind of odd. Now, the way that I remember a clover orbital is represented by the number two is like this. I'm going to write the number two and then I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to write the number two and then I just keep going. And that's how I remember that D is the number two and is a clover orbital. Now, I don't know how many years I taught this uh, and then last, last year, two years ago, at some point a student was like, but Dr. Morales, there's an easier way to remember that. And I was like, okay, so what is it? And then they totally blew my mind. So the way that most students remember this, S is spherical, zero, that's just going to have to be the same way that I've got it. But the way this student told me was, but if you go PP, -P, it's number one. And if you go doo doo, it's number two. So P is number one and D is number two because of toddler bathroom lingo. And, um, Hopefully one of the two of those things will help you. Okay, so let's go back for a second and talk about this. So what this really means is the first energy level has one sublevel, which we say is zero, but it's really just the S orbital. The second energy level has two sublevels. There's the S sublevel and the P sublevel. Third energy level has three sublevels, S, P, and D. And then fourth energy level has four sublevels, which we call S, P, D, and F. Generally, we're going to be using the numbers, but sometimes it's kind of nice to have those letters there with that. Okay. Now, because we have to be difficult, not all orbital, not all sublevels have only one orbital. So if we go back to this, you can kind of see there's one S orbital, three P orbitals, one, two, three, four, five D orbitals, and seven F orbitals. Well, by golly, how do you remember all that? So what we do is the, the magnetic quantum number, that M sub L, is the exact orbital within that sublevel. This ranges from negative L to positive L, okay? Now, the way that we can do that is we look at, um, we look at the, the angular momentum quantum number, and then this ranges from negative to positive. So if we're talking about S, 
which is represented by a zero, there's no such thing as a negative or positive zero. It's just zero. So the S sublevel has one orbital that we call zero. Same thing here. In the second energy level, there's two sublevels, S and P. Now, the S orbital, the S sublevel only has one orbital. Again, there's no negative or positive zero like here. There is only uh, zero. And so that is what we have here. However, in the P orbital, if we go to this one. If we go to this, we can talk about PX, PY, PZ. But the problem with specifying which axis this orbital is lying on is the fact that this is molecule is spinning in three dimensions all the time. It's changing. So why do we want to waste our time saying X, Y, and Z when we don't know? And because it's rotating, the way that we kind of handle this is instead of saying PX, PY, PZ, we go negative to positive. So there's going to be negative 1, 0, and then plus 1. So this is really just PX, PY, PZ. But because we have a spinning occurring in three-dimensional space, it's just easier to say negative 1 to positive 1. OK? So let's look at um, the third sublevel, OK? In the third, third sublevel, oh, excuse me, in the third energy level, we have three sublevels that we call S, P, and D. Now, the S sublevel only has one orbital, so it's M sub L is just going to be zero. The P sublevel has three orbitals. We saw up here we could call it that, but Again, this is just negative 1, 0, plus 1. There's three orbitals. We're going to call them negative 1 and uh, 0, plus 1. For the D um, sublevel, there's going to be five orbitals. Now, here's where it really starts to make sense to use numbers, because here we've got, um, let me make this big so we can see dxy, dxz, dx squared, dyz, d, of course. Okay, so just instead of saying px, py, pz, dxy, and so on, we're just going to use these nice numbers as an address, kind of like your house number. Okay? Now, the last thing I need to say is here we've got our energy level, then we have our sublevel, the exact orbitals that are in that sublevel, and then each orbital can contain two electrons. And so we need a way of specifying which electron we're talking about. And the way we do that is with the spin quantum number. Now, the spin quantum number is just going to be plus or minus one half. When we write electrons, we generally write one going up and one going down. The electrons are represented by these little half arrows. Now, it's arbitrary. Because we do not know the path of the electrons themselves, we just say one goes left, one goes right, one goes up, one goes down. The point here is because they are both negatively charged, they don't like each other. So they go in opposite ways. Um, kind of think about it as, you know, maybe high school, you walk down the hall, you see an X, you go the other direction. Okay, just that simple. So just kind of as you're working through these, these, this is kind of your flashcard slide of what numbers are possible. So consider all the orbitals for the principal quantum number, n of 3. What are the subshells for this energy level, and what is the designation of each? So I'm going to do n, l, m sub l, and then m sub s, just because I like having my chart. So if we're in 3, 
We know that we're in the third period. We're in the third energy level. Our L ranges from, oh, by the way guys, um, go ahead and hit pause and try this on your own just because it always makes it go better if you do that. So I'm assuming you have tried this and now are waiting for your answer. Your L ranges from 0 to n minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. So our L is 0, 1, and 2. Now technically we can call this the 3S sublevel, the 3P sublevel, and the 3D sublevel. Okay? Now just because I like being difficult, let's go ahead and do the M sub L as well. The M sub L for 0 for the S sublevel is just 0. For the P sublevel, it's going to be minus 1, 0, plus 1. And then for the D sublevel, it ranges from negative to positive. So it's negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. Now, with that in mind, guys, we could even talk about the number of electrons that are going to occupy that third energy level. Because each orbital can hold two electrons, we're going to count up the number of orbitals. Let's go ahead and use a highlighter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine orbitals, and then nine times two can have up to 18 electrons. So consider the third 3D subshell. How many orbitals are in here? And if we go back, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's two electrons that can be housed in every orbital. We know that because they can either be plus or minus 1 half. So if there's five orbitals, it can hold 10 electrons. Okay, so we've talked about the principal quantum number. We've talked about the angular momentum quantum number. We've even talked a little bit about the magnetic quantum number. The idea is you go from the energy level, this huge broad topic, to the sublevel, to the specific orbital, and then you use your magnetic spin quantum number to sp say exactly what electron we're referring to. And the point that I want to make now is that um, we actually have a pattern in the periodic table. And so if you kind of consider you know, we have these two tall columns over here. I just need to move this over a little bit. There we go. Make sure you guys can see. We've talked about how these really refer to the N, the, N, the principal quantum number, but there's also this is an S block. We say that this is the S block because when you go to fill the electrons according to the off-bow principle in a minute, this is going to correspond to the S sublevel. The S sublevel has one orbital that we call zero, the M sub uh, L here. This can be hold two electrons. It's either going to be plus or minus one half for each of those. So these are two columns. They always correspond to the S sublevel. And for that, our purposes, let's actually put this over here. Um, in fact, one of the videos I posted in your reading does that. And for this unit, it's really helpful to do that. Now, over here, if we consider the P sublevel, the P sublevel has uh, is represented by a L of 1. Remember, if you go PP, it's number 1. And our M sub L's range from negative 1, 0, and plus 1. 
So there's three. Three orbitals, each one can hold two electrons, so it can hold up to six electrons. Well, if you count our columns here, one, two, three, four, five, six, this is our P block. These six columns correspond to the P block, okay? Now, down here, the D block has, it's represented by an L of two, which means our M sub L is minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, plus two. There's five orbitals here. They can hold up to 10 electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 columns wide here. So we have our S block, our P block, and our D block. Now, what's even great, even better, is that we can organize the periodic table in order of which orbital is going to be filled with electrons first. Okay, we start at the bottom and we go work our way up. It's just like a staircase. You start at the bottom, you go up in order. Okay, now when we're doing this, keep in mind the only thing that's going to really throw us a little bit is that magnetic spin quantum number. It just means left or right. It doesn't really mean different energy, different orbital. It's just going to be a way of specifying which electron are we talking about, okay? So let's look at how we're gonna fill these. The way we fill electrons in an atom is you're going to have an equal, if you have a neutral atom, you have an equal number of protons and electrons. Protons are all in the nucleus, but the electrons are going to go into different energy levels, sublevels, orbitals, and so on. And so we have to start at the lowest energy and then work our way up, okay? Now, technically, we kind of want to say, oh, you know, everything in the second energy level is going to be the same energy. Everything in the third energy level is going to have the same energy. That's not true because when we look at the way the orbitals overlap, here we have an S, let's change our color, then you have your P orbitals, and then you have your D orbitals, and I can't draw but so much more on top of them. Because of the way you have your nucleus, and I'm going to do it like this just to show you, um, not to scale obviously, while you have attraction between the nucleus and the electrons, you also have repulsions between the electrons of one orbital and the electrons in another orbital. And so you have to consider how those repulsions change the energy themselves. You know, you walk into a classroom and five rows are empty and two rows are really packed, you're probably not going to fight to get into the middle of that row that's, you know, really packed. You're probably just going to take an empty seat somewhere that's accessible. You don't fight when there's an easier option. The same thing happens here, guys. You're going to go in order of where the energy falls, okay? And so generally, Electrons are going to fill S, P, D, and F in that order. They would always prefer within an energy level to go to S. Only when S is full are, will they go to the P sublevel. Only when the P sublevel has completely full orbitals, all six of electrons are taken, spots are taken, will it go to the D sublevel, and so on and so on. Now, this is called the off bow principle. Okay, there are a couple of ways of drawing this, and I want to kind of show you this way first. Um, the way that I do it is I write first energy level, there's one sublevel, we call 1s. Second energy level, there's two sublevels. I'm going to change my color. I think it might be more visible. There's 2s and 2p. Third energy level, there's three sublevels, 3s, 3p, 3d. You see I'm going in order, s, p, d, and then 
F would be the next one. If we go to the fourth sublevel, mm, let's do green. There's four fourth energy level has four sublevels, 4S, 4P, 4D, 4F. Now, for time saving purposes, I'm only going to do um, 5S really quick. Let's do. Now, obviously, we, we could keep going, but I'm not going to here, okay? Instead, what I want to show you is this. The way you determine the order is not like this. You do slashes in this diagonal manner. And whatever you encounter first is what you write. So if you look, the first thing I did here is I encountered 1s. Then I hit 2s. Then 2p and 3s. Then I hit 3p. But I don't hit 3d next. I hit 4s. So 4s, then 3d, 4p, and 5s. Good enough for now, okay? So the off-bow principle says electrons are going to fill the orbital of the lowest energy first and they're going to keep going up. Now, let me show you the trick, guys. Oh. Keep, let's move this over so you guys can see it. Now, um, right, there we go. The periodic table is already organized in this order. It's already giving you the answer, okay? So if we look at this, we have, of course. Okay. Um, as you look at the periodic table, it's already giving you the answer. And so if you look, first row, S block. So we're hitting 1S. Uh, blue, it needs to be blue. Then, now see, remember, helium should come over here. It's really good in that video that's posted with your reading. Now, the next thing we hit, gone across, we come back, we hit two, second row, ener energy level two, we're in the S block. Then we go over and we hit the P block, 2P. Then we hit th third energy level, S block. Third energy level, third row, P block. But then we come down and we hit 4S before we hit 3D. So it is already organized, guys, by what you are going to encounter. This is a great way of kind of using your periodic table as a cheat sheet, okay? So kind of keep in mind, your rows indicate the energy level for everything but the D block. The D block, it's not um, like this is 1S and this is 2S, 2P, 3S. This is actually N minus 1. So like NS, NP, N minus 1D. Fourth row, but only 3. 4 minus 1 is 3D. So the off bow principle just says the electrons are going to fill the orbitals in this order, in order of low energy to higher energy orbitals. Now, because of that, we can go ahead and write the order, and I just did it up there, but we can write the order of the off bow principle just like that. Now, honestly, guys, the highest I have ever gone for any class was to like 4D. For time-wise, we don't have time to go but so far. And usually, it's going to be more like, hmm, I don't want to tell you. But the, the point is, this is as high up as I could possibly go. Every question on your exam, usually you have 25 questions per exam. In a face-to-face -face class, they get 75 minutes, so so do you guys. Um, that's two and a half minutes 
really per question plus time to like proofread. So you have to be able to do these questions in two and a half minutes. I can't go up to, you know, energy level seven and have you guys do that. Not writing out all this. Now, when we get to the shortcut method in a, in a minute, I'm, I can't wait to show you that either, but it's going to be a little bit faster. Um, but I like to do the long way until we really have an understanding. Okay. So within a subshell, the electron configuration having the lowest energy or the most stable is the one that has the maximum unpaired electrons. So what Hund's rule says, if we're talking about something like the p orbitals, the p sub level has three orbitals. They're named negative one, zero, and plus one. We don't fill, if we had six electrons, you don't go up, down, up, down, like that. That's not correct. Instead, you want to make them degenerate. You want to make them all the same. And so we go up, up, up. Only once they're all filled are you going to come back and start pairing them. Okay? Now, this is the same as if, you know, you guys rent a beach house with, like, family or friends, and there's three bedrooms. You don't all go to the first bedroom and, like, pile in there. You typically spread out. You occupy all the bedrooms roughly equally, okay? And that has to do with the same kind of concept here. You're trying to minimize repulsions by spreading out first. So let's look at the electron configuration, quantum numbers, and orbital diagram for oxygen. Here's where at this point you guys have all this information. I really want to show you the application and how much fun this can truly be. Okay? Now, oxygen, if we go back to a periodic table, Hmm, that's not a good number. There we go. Um, oh, for goodness sake. Keep. There we go. There's one away. Oxygen is atomic number eight. So there's eight protons. There should be eight electrons. Okay? So let's go ahead and we're going to fill the electrons with oxygen according to the off-bow principle. 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d. I want to have this kind of here. And so we're going to fill it just like this. So the first thing we're going to come up with is 1s. Now the s block Come on, there you go. Only ha can hold two electrons. There's two columns here. There's one orbital in that sublevel. It can only hold two electrons. So we still need to find eight electrons or minus two. So now we've got six left. Next thing we would hit would be 2s. The s sublevel, again, we're in the s block, so we can count over. One, two. We still haven't countered that oxygen yet. So 2s2. Now we're going to go in to the 2p. One, two, three, four. 2p4. We found oxygen in the second row in the p block, the fourth one over. That is our electron configuration. Now, let's look at those quantum numbers for a second. Um, actually, to do that, I need to write the orbital diagram. So to do that, uh, let's do the 1s sublevel has one orbital. We call it 0. Remember, s is spherical, so our m sub l is 0. The 2s has one orbital in that sublevel. We call it 0. There's two electrons there. In the 2p sublevel, there's three electrons. Remember, p means, you know, your m sub l. Um, your, for p, your l is 1. You go pp, it's number 1. Your m sub l is negative 1, 0, plus.
plus 1. So you have 3. So let's fill our electrons according to Hund's rule. We have two electrons up, down. Now we can go to the 2s. There's two electrons up, down. Now there's four electrons in the p, but remember Hund's rule says we're going to spread them out. So it's up, up, up. Only once everybody's got their own room do you come back and force somebody to share. Now I typically circle the last electron I draw. I think I'm like the only person that does that. But that way if you're, you know, watching something or you get distracted, you kind of know which one was the last one I drew. Now the last electron we draw is the one we want the quantum numbers for. So we want N, L, M sub L, and M sub S. The energy level for this is 2. I know that because this number is 2. My L, anytime we're talking about a p orbital, we have an L of 1. You're going pp, okay. Now the m sub L, this is where it starts to get a little tricky. This is the specific orbital that we're talking about. Remember, we could have said px, py, pz, but that's not how we do it. Because it's rotating, we call it negative 1, plus, negative one 0, or plus 1. This is in the negative 1 orbital. And so our m sub l is minus 1. Now, the electron is aimed down, so it's minus 1 half. Your m sub s is either going to be plus 1 half or minus 1 half. If it's aiming up, it's plus 1 half. If it's aiming down, it's minus 1 half. Oh, right. Now, if we look at, interesting, the electron configuration, orbital diagram, everything for sulfur. I feel like there was this um, option to go to. There used to have a go to slide. Okay, so sulfur is number 16. Now, just to kind of clarify really quick, because I like to show it on the periodic table mm. and show. Let's move this over. Here, we've got first energy level, S block, 1, 2. Second energy level, we're in the S block, 1, 2. Then we go over to the two, second energy level, P block, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I still haven't run into sulfur, so I'm going to keep going. Third energy level, we're in the S block. 1, 2. Then we run over to the P block. So we're now we're in 3P. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so now we have uh, 3P4. That's where we're going to end. Now as a way of checking, there should, there's 16 protons, so there should be 16 electrons. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10 plus 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16. So we have the right number of electrons here. So that's our electron configuration. Let's go forward and do the rest. So we just said 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. Now, orbital diagram. Anytime you have an s sublevel, you have one orbital. Remember, we call it zero. I'm going to do it above. I like to do it above. I should have given myself more room. Anytime you have an s sublevel, you have one orbital that we call zero. 
Anytime you have a P, sublevel. You have three orbitals. We call them negative one, zero, plus one. S sublevel, one orbital that we call zero. P sublevel, we have three orbitals, negative one, zero, plus one. Now to fill this, Hund's rule says we go up, down, then we can fill the 2s, up, down, the 2p, there's 6, so we're going to go up, 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 down, 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 up, down, up, 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 down. I'm going to circle the last electron I drew. Now if we look, the n for this one, we are in the 3p. So our n is 3, third energy level. Our L, anytime we're in the p block, it's a number 1. Specifically here, we're in the negative 1 orbital, because this is where we are, negative 1. And it's aimed down, so it's minus 1 half. Now guys, that is pretty incredible because if you look and show, yes keep, if you look, oxygen and sulfur are right on top of each other. They're both one, two, three, four over in the P block. So if we come down here and we look at oxygen, there we go, 2, 1, negative 1, negative 1 half. Here, 3, 1, negative 1, negative 1 half. The only thing that is different is the n, and that makes sense because it's one row different. It's one row below. And so if you're looking at the periodic table, what is great, oops, let's go up here for a second. This will work. Everything in this column is going to end in NS1, NS2. I'm going to skip the transition metals for a minute. Everything in this column ends in NS2, NP1, NP2, NP3, NP4. So if we were to do selenium, it would end in 4. Remember, we're in the fourth row. P4. And so there's going to be a trend. All you have to do is do enough until you see the pattern. Okay? All right, so let's go to end show. Yes. All right. Now, we're going to write the electron configuration, orbital diagram, and quantum numbers for argon and potassium. Now, guys, Argon, oh, please be, of course not. Hopefully that's enough. Argon is in the noble gas column. It's number 18. Potassium is number 19. So as we're going through this, argon has 18. And you can kind of see it's going to be 1s, 1, 2. 2s, 1, 2, 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3s, 1, 2, 3p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oops. So for argon, we need to have 18 electrons. 1s, 2, 2s, 2. I'm giving myself room for the orbital diagram. You do not have to do that. 3s2, 3p6. Double checking. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10, plus this 8 is 18 electrons. Now, for the orbital diagram, every time we have an s sublevel, we have one orbital that's called 0. Every time we have a p sublevel, 
we have three orbitals called negative 1, 0, and plus 1. Now we can fill our electrons. We're going to go up, down, up, down. Now we need to do degenerate. We need to follow Hund's rule. So it's up, 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 down, 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 up, down, up, 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 down, down, down. Oops. Yeah. So this is the last electron I drew. I forgot to circle it. I was like, oh, I can't say anything else yet. There we go. Now in terms of quantum numbers, n, l, m sub l, m sub s. For here, it's going to be 3 because of this 3. P means our L is 1. M sub L, we're in the plus 1 orbital. Here the plus actually is important. And then M sub S, it's aimed down, so it's minus 1 half. Okay, so let's look at potassium. Potassium is 19. It's the next one. So if we look at this, we're going to hit 1s2, 2s1, 2, 2p, p block, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3s, 1, 2, 3p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4, and now we're back in the s block, first column, so 4s1. Okay, yeah, that'll work. Okay, so potassium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. Golly, that's long. You can check that there's 19 electrons here. And you can also see, guys, and this is the whole point of this exact problem, These are the same to that point, okay? So the shortcut, the whole point of this, is that we can say for a noble gas, we can abbreviate all of this by saying brackets argon, 4s1. You have to do the last electron that you encounter. So if you look, the last electron that you get to before potassium, is argon. You can't do something like neon or krypton. It has to be the exact noble gas last. So if we were talking about magnesium, the last noble gas would have been neon. Okay. Oops. There we go. And so with that in mind, um, we can really simplify this by saying argon 4s1. Orbital diagram here that's an s orbital, so there's only a sublevel, so there's only one orbital that we call zero, and it's aimed up. So here are n, l, m sub l, and m sub s. Our four is our n. Anytime we have an s, we have a nice spherical orbital that we represent by the number zero. m sub l for s has to be zero. I mean, m sub l for zero has to be zero. And then this is aimed up, so it's plus one half just like that okay now guys I could ask you to solve the electron configuration for everything on the periodic table um, if you know the noble gas configuration it's not too bad however um, I find that it typically works best if you use the um, what's it called a whole period. It really will see, it will really solidify the pattern that you're going to see. Okay? Now, please hit pause and try this. Uh, we just did potassium. Okay? And so you're going to kind of see there is a definite trend here. I'm probably not giving myself enough room. Oops. 
Oops, skipped one. Germanium. Uh, that'll work for here. Actually, we're going to do this these first. Okay, so now we've got our elements. We've got what we want. So let's go ahead and rewrite potassium. Potassium is number 19. It's going to end with argon 4s1. So fourth energy level, S sub level means our L is zero. If anytime you have an L of zero, the M sub L must be zero and it's aimed up so it's plus one half. For calcium, calcium is number 20. So we can abbreviate that with argon and then 4S12. There should be a one there. S sub level, there's one orbital that we call zero, up, down. So here we have fourth energy level, S sub level, that orbital we call zero, minus one half. Now, if we look, scantium is argon, 4S2, 3D1. Remember that this is the 3D, not the 4D. Oops. So S sub level, we have one orbital that we call zero. D sub level, we have five orbitals that we call negative two, negative one, zero, plus one, and plus two. So this is up, down, and then up. So here, we have three. D means our L is going to be two. Remember, you go do do, it's number two. Um, and then your M sub L, it's all the way over here in the minus two, aimed up, so it's plus one half. If we look at the next one, titanium, we end up getting argon, 4s2, 3d2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1 orbital for s sublevels is called 0, 5 orbitals for the d sublevel called negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. So we go up, down, up, up. Electro the quantum numbers here, we're in the third energy level. We're in the D block, so L is 2. Now we're in the minus 1, plus 1 half. For vanadium, vanadium is the next one over. So you get argon, 4s2, 3d3. S sublevel has one orbital called 0. D sublevel has Five called negative two, negative one, zero, plus one, plus two. So we go up, down, up, up, up. So now we have third energy level, D block. Now we're in the zero orbital, still aimed up, so it's still plus one half. If we go back to chromium, Chromium is the next one over. So we have argon, 4s2, 3d4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. Up, down, up, 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 up. 3, third energy level, d block. Now we're in the plus 1, aimed up, so it's plus 1 half. You guys should start to see a pattern here. For manganese, manganese is argon, 4s2, 3d5. Now remember guys, you guys get a periodic table on the exam. It's that blank one that I keep showing you. Um, but you can write on it as much as you want. It's yours. And so just 
do what you've got to do, okay? I mean, make sure that, you know, you're comfortable. Up, down. Up, 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 up. So this is now 3, 2, plus 2, plus 1 half. Now, with iron, we have now filled all of these d orbitals. So according to Hun's rule, we can go ahead and start pairing now. So when we deal with iron, we have argon, 4s2, 3d6. And if you kind of look, iron is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over. There we go. 1s orbital per s sublevel, 5d orbitals, minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. Up, down, up, 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 and then down. So now we have 3, 2, minus 2, minus 1 half. I'm going to go to the next one. I kind of want to show you all of these, but I'm kind of thinking maybe I should show you the exception first. Um, and the two exceptions are chromium and copper. Let me see if I can pull this up. Um, chromium is here. And you can kind of tell it doesn't follow the same thing. Think about chromium. I want to show you this so I don't go bounce back in slides. Um, chromium has two here, but hey, there's an empty one right here, an empty orbital. And so it turns out that it's more stable to come sit over here. And so it's kind of like if you're at, um, you know, I kind of want to use conference, but maybe like uh, in a classroom with desks and you've shared a desk before, generally if you see a blank spot, you're going to just kind of go over. And so it really ends up being 4s1, 3d5. Because of that, I'm not going to ask you quantum numbers. Instead, what I want you to see is how the pattern changes. Okay, so let's go into cobalt. Cobalt is going to be argon, 4s2, 3d. You can kind of see cobalt is next one over, so it's got 7. And so we go up, down, up, 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 down, down. N, L, M sub L, and M sub S. We're in the third energy level. D means our L is 2. Now we're in the minus 1, minus 2, minus 1. And we're aimed down, so it's minus 1 half. Nickel is next. Here we have argon, 4s2, 3d8. There's one orbital for an s sublevel, 5 for d, 0, minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. So filling these, we go up, down, up, 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 down, down, down. So now we have 3, 2, 0 minus one half. The next one is copper. Copper should be argon 4s2 3d9. Up, down, up, 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 down, 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 down. It's not actually, um, but if we were to sign the quantum numbers here it would be 3 2 for a d plus 1 minus 1 half. The problem is it's actually more stable. Kind of think about this like um, you know a limousine in high school. It ends up being more stable for this guy to come share a limousine with all of his friends who are already couples and this guy not to be alone than it is for them to go as a couple and leave this guy as a stack. Okay. So it ends up really being 4s1, 3d, 10. 
Not sure why other than it's more stable that way. Okay, so zinc is argon 4s2, 3d10, up, down, up, 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 down, 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 down. Here we've got 3, d is 2, plus 2, minus 1 half, okay? Now, if we look at gallium, gallium ends with our, oops, I'm sorry, gallium is going to be argon, 4s2, 3d10, now we're in the 4p, first one over. I'm only going to write the p orbitals here um, because they're the only thing that's going to change. Each p sublevel has three orbitals named negative one, zero, plus one. So we're just going to put one there. So now we're in the fourth energy level. p block means number one, the dumbbell being smushed together. We're in the negative one orbital and aimed up, so plus one half. Germanium is argon, 4s2, 3d10, 4p2. Up, up. So now we're 4, still in the p, but now the orbital is going to be 0, still aimed up, so plus 1 half. And so you can kind of imagine as we go to arsenic and then selenium, exactly what we're going to see. And so if we go to, um, oops, ha 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 ha. If we go to ar arsenic, which is AS, we have AR, I was ahead of myself, 4S2, 3D10, 4P3. Up, up, up. So this is 4. P means 3, I mean, I'm sorry, the P sublevel means you have an L of 1. Now we are in the plus 1 orbital, hmm. and we're aimed up, so it's plus 1 half. Only now can we go back and start to pair. So if we look at selenium, selenium is going to be argon, ouch, 4s2, 3d10, 4P4. Kind of looks like oxygen and sulfur. One, two, three. Up, 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 now down. So that's the last one. Four, P is one. Now we're back in the minus one. And now we're aimed down, so it's minus one half. If you look at um, bromine, Bromine is argon, 4s2, 3d10, 4p5, 1, 2, 3, up, 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 down, down. So 4, 1, 0, minus 1 half. And then for krypton, it's going to be argon, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. up, 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 down, down, down. So it's going to be 4, p is 1, now we're in the plus 1, minus 1 half. You can't abbreviate by just saying krypton, you have to actually show something, but you can still use the last noble gas if you want to. So when we're talking about valence electrons and core electrons, the valence electrons are the ones in the outer shell, okay? So the biggest numbers. So if we're talking about like, it's anything after the noble gas. So like these are valence electrons. Core electrons are the smaller numbers. Usually this is what's abbreviated by the noble gas. The electrons are going to increase or decrease according to uh, the charge. Um, and so if you have a positive charge, you are losing electrons. If you have a negative charge, you are 
gaining electrons. Now, let me see if I can. If you look here, nitrogen 3 minus, nitrogen Really want this one. Nitrogen, you gain three, one, two, three. Seven protons, seven electrons, you gain a three minus. You're now going to have ten electrons. Oxygen with a two minus charge, you gain one, two. You're not going to have eight plus two electrons to be the same as neon. Fluorine, you gain one, it's going to be the same as neon. Sodium had eleven electrons. If you lose one, it's going to look like neon. So if we look, because all of these have 10 electrons, we could talk about nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium. Oh, I think I can do it. Nitrogen should be 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Give me a periodic table. There we go. One, two, three. If you gain three more, it's going to look like neon. And so now you've added three um, electrons, which is going to give us a total of six here. Oxygen. It should have ended in 2p4 the way we did on a previous slide. But by adding a 2 minus charge, 2s2, 2p4, we're going to change this 2 to a 6. 8 electrons plus 2 more makes 10. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10. Same thing here, 1s2, 2s2. It should have been 2p5, but by having a negative charge here, it actually is going to be adding an electron, so it's going to be 2p6. Neon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Honestly, sometimes you'll see this abbreviated as helium, 2s2, 2p6, but really it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not really a shortcut, right? Sodium is usually abbreviated as neon, 3s1. By losing an electron, you get rid of that electron, so now you're just left with the configuration of neon. This is neon 3s2. If you make a 2 plus charge, you lose those two electrons, and it's the same configuration as helium. So I know that this is um, kind of uh, a longer video than usual, but there's lots of examples in here, and I wanted to kind of give you the information and the application all together.